in the pursuit of expressing our emotions in a healthy way, how do you, what is health, a healthy expression of our emotions if we're not to suppress it or repress it or express it in a way that is dangerous or harmful to those around yeah. us? How, how do we release what is inside of us? And um, somebody you quote in the book, what's in must out. Yeah. Well, what is in us must out in this case, um, the physician researcher who said that was talking about our creative urges. Mm. You know, if something's inside us, we have to give it expression. Right. Otherwise, we'll choke. And say, right. you know, so, but which but I'd it, love, I'd love to go there as well. But yeah, then also there's these emotions too. That yeah. Must... Well, um, so one of the essential needs of children, one of the essential developmental needs of children, in the absence of which child development is distorted, is the freedom to express all their emotions. Now, in our brains, there are certain emotional circuits. We're wired for them. They include uh, anger, lust, uh, curiosity, uh, playfulness, um, caring for others, fear, grief, even panic. We're wired for these. We share these circuits, by the way, with other mammals. The child, in the course of their development, will experience all of them. They have to be able to express it and to have that expression received, understood, attuned with, and held by the adult world. When that doesn't happen, we start stuffing our emotions. We start disconnecting from ourselves in order to belong, in order to be accepted, to be acceptable. So then we don't know how to express healthy anger anymore. Healthy anger, there's nothing negative about it. Healthy anger simply says, you're in my space, get out. All animals have it. You know, you enter an animal space, you get an anger display. Yeah. You know, which is good because it prevents violence. Mm. So at least it reduces the chances of it. Um, it's a boundary defense. That's all it is. You're in my space, get out. Yeah. Whether that's physically or emotionally true. No. Healthy anger is simply a no which at the same time is a saying yes to yourself. Um, when people don't, are not granted the experience of going through healthy anger, having that understood and respected by adults, they suppress it. Now it'll burst out of, out of them in a volcano. Either they totally repress it, in which case they become sitting ducks for malignancy or autoimmune disease because that, those are the studied traits of people who develop these conditions. I don't make this stuff up. I've seen it, but I don't make it up. Uh, or they get into states of explosive anger, which is like a volcano where the pressure has been building and building and building and poof, all of a sudden the volcano blows its top. Yeah. And so the question, if I can translate your question, is if in childhood we were made to repress that healthy anger, how then do we learn its expression as adults? Yes. Well, that's a question of uh, good therapy, I think. <laughs> I think, you yeah. know. Yeah, would you just say like creating uh, a nurturing environment for that to be released from within? Because... In interpersonal dynamics, whether it's within our family or friends or lover, um, it's like these repressed emotions that we haven't dealt with are a pebble in our shoe that kind of make us uh, shittier versions of ourselves constantly. <laughs> and until we can like have, I guess, the safe space to like take off the shoe and take out the pebble, yeah. um, which could be in through therapy or psychedelics and a lot of the modalities that you, yeah. that you suggest. Yeah, or, or um, even just awareness. Um, if I am aware that anger is rising within me, well, then I can, if I can be an observer of it and hold it myself, not that I shouldn't experience it, is that I should experience it, but I don't necessarily have to act it out on somebody else. Yeah. Well, that's a question of self-awareness, mindfulness, physical practices. A lot of the martial arts are not about killing others. It's about uh, being present to yourself. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Mia. 
And I'm curious, you're mentioning so many different responses, so many different ways of expressing what has happened to us and how we've been wounded from addiction to depression. And I'm curious specifically about anger. Is there anger? You say anger. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything that you've noticed that particularly causes that as an adult reaction, or that is the underlying wound that that shows up and expresses as that when we grow older? Are you talking about adult anger? Yes. And are you talking about anger that's destructive and eruptive and 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 like a volcanic? Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Yes. Because, because and there's, there's, there's such a thing as healthy anger, you know. Yeah, I think beyond that, like, quick fuses and ease to frustration and yeah. hot, fast anger that can that can go from nothing to something quickly. Yeah, yeah. got it. I mentioned my friend, um, the psychologist Gordon Neufeld, and uh, he's the main author of our book I helped to write with him. It's called um, um, Hold On To Your Kids. It's a parenting book, okay? Um, I think it's really an important book. Um, it's been published in 30 countries. And Gordon says, and Gordon, to my mind, is the world's most astute developmental psychologist, not as well known as he should be. And he says that frustration is the engine of aggression. So that person who erupts in, frustra- in aggression is frustrated, deeply frustrated. When are we frustrated? When our needs are not met. So the angry adult was a frustrated child whose needs were not met. And who probably didn't have the freedom to express their anger as children. So they had to suppress it. So what happens with the pressure cooker? If you keep boiling the water at some point literally it blows its top that's what we call it or a volcano volcano when the pressure is enough it blows its top so somebody who's like that hasn't learned how to express their healthy anger and how to process and hold their own emotions and then something happens and it erupts um so it has to do with childhood frustration. And again, my friend Larry, we both talk about people who have trouble regulating their emotions. It's perfectly angry. It's perfectly healthy for a child to be angry. But as we mature, we were to regulate our emotions. So that if I'm noticing the anger arising within me, I'll notice it. The person that you're describing never notices it. It arises in them until they can't control it. It just blows their top. They blow their top. So something happened to them that made them very frustrated and something happened to them that makes it difficult for them to regulate their own emotions. My concern would be that this may not be the case at all, but if you are in relationship with people like that, it's not your job to try and figure out what's going on with them. Your job is to look after yourself. Like it doesn't matter. Not that it doesn't matter, but sometimes in a society, especially women take on the role of understanding their partners, but at the risk of ignoring their own needs. So I'm not going to go any further with that. I just, that would be my concern in anybody who asked that question. It's okay. It's one thing to understand it. And if, if that person came to me, I know how to help them. The trouble is these people very often don't ask for help. And it's, their, it's the people in their lives who ask for help, but they tend not to. No, sometimes they do, and when they do, that's great. 